to, and from teenage tennis prodigy to award-winning broadcaster. Our next guest has lived a life of two amazingly successful halves and now Sue Barker has written it all down in her first and only autobiography, <laughs> Calling the Shots. Here it is and here she is. Welcome. Thank you. So, so lovely to see you I've today. I've been too proud. It's fun. Have you is seen it? Yes, I've already oh, seen good. it. Yeah, oh, good. Oh, good, oh, yeah. good, oh, good. I loved it. As soon as Sue walked in today, she was shortly followed by Pims and strawberries <laughs> yes. and cream. It's like, it's like wherever she goes, this exactly. comes. Are there just people with a tray of this yeah. following you around all your life? <laughs> better than spam, yeah. as better you than said. Spam. Definitely better than spam. Is it ever too early for Pims? No. Never too early. Tuck we just have in, a little... tuck in. Yes, yes. yes. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Because I could never do this when I was at Wimbledon. It there you go. No alcohol. I know, you were the only one. Oh, my word, that's delicious. That is delicious. I look at this book and I just think, God, I can't, I can't believe that you haven't done this before, for starters. <laughs> I mean, the stories that you have to tell, and also the fact that it was really your sort of, your mum yeah. that kind of said I, to you yeah, to do this. Yeah, because you're right. I, I always said I'd never do one. Yeah. But my mum um, really wanted me to do one, because she said, you know, you really want to have a memory of your whole life, you know, what, what I've achieved and what I've done in my career. Yeah. And uh, so I said no, and then she had dementia and she was going downhill, and, in the, yeah. and I started talking to her about things that happened in the past and mm -hmm. she could remember all of that. She wasn't so good with, you know, what was happening around oh, her now. So I got all the scrapbooks out and I thought, why not? I'm, you know, do this it. Is do, do it for her. Sadly, she didn't quite see it um, published. I lost well, the last okay. year, but she got to 100 and wow. she got her birthday card good, from yeah. the Queen. So she, that's, that was what she oh, lived for the last for five years. She wanted that. She got to see you win. Yeah a major title, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. You know, they're so hard to win as well, Sue. I, I guess know. now in reflection, you realise yeah. what an incredible moment that was for you, the it, French Open. It really was. French Open 1976. If I knew it mm. was going to be my only Grand Slam, I would have celebrated a lot better than I did. I thought it was the first of many, yeah. but sadly it wasn't. But at least I've got one. Yeah. I, my coach always said, Grand Slams are uh, legacy rankings, you know, come and go. So. You're, I mean, you mentioned your coach, yeah, and this is Arthur Roberts. I mean, mm. what an incredible man oh. he he was i mean tough i mean he didn't make mm. things easy on you by any stretch i think there's this story about how um he sort of taught you sort of the the, the fight really yeah. by giving you a one-way ticket to france for <laughs> yes. a, for one of your things. yeah he did and then said you know you've got to win a few matches to buy your ticket home trust me you don't want to phone me and ask me to why are you out some money so i was desperate so did I, you yes well I, <laughs> I slept within the tennis club for the first three days so once i'd made the quarterfinals i knew i had enough money then to buy the ticket that's so, incredible but he was he was absolutely wonderful and he taught me so much about um, his mantra was, have no regrets, go out there, do what you want to do, have a go, don't be afraid to mm. take on challenges. Because I don't, I think I was quite shy. I yeah. never really wanted to go and play like on centre court at Wimbledon, but he taught, he gave me the tools to be able to do that and then have the guts to go into Sit broadcasting, through. which was, you know, sort of women in broadcasting in the 90s, you know, 80s and 90s. There weren't, there yeah, weren't you many. You were a trailblazer. So, well, so, mm. I've been lucky enough to work with Sue back in the day. <laughs> we had Olympics a great all, time. We had such a great time. <laughs> but you're the kindest, gentlest soul. You held my oh. hand so much during those oh. years for me. Oh. And I always wonder, how did you become such a, you know, an aggressive beast on the tennis court? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's are two very different personalities there, right? Well, that's the thing. It's all, it's, you know, you have to ha get into a different mindset. And that's what, you know, Arthur Roberts really taught me to do. And he was just the most amazing coach. And, and I, I had so many wonderful memories playing at Wimbledon. Sadly, didn't win it. But then I was in such an amazing era. I was world number three when Chrissy Everett, Martina Navratilova won and two. Yeah. So, you know, it was, a, it was a, a very tough era then. Do you know yeah. what? You, you may not have won Wimbledon, but you definitely won its heart. <laughs> and there was no clearer demonstration of that than when you stepped down from that and you, you retired and you announced it and it was, you were on centre court and everyone stood up and gave you the most incredible standing ovation. I mean, I can see it as it's like, you're <laughs> reliving it. I'm looking I'm, in your I'm, eyes that I can see it. Every but... time I think of it, I, I get really oh. emotional because yeah. I didn't, A, I didn't expect it. John McEnroe didn't turn up to the rehearsal. I had a lovely closing link planned, you know, all, all to, yeah. to thank the champions. And then he took over and did that. And when everyone stood, it just, that was Special. the best thing that's ever happened oh, in my career. Same. Because, you know, they're the viewers, you know, and it yeah. was just so wonderful. And John McEnroe was just amazing. And I've, yeah. I've, I've loved it 30 years, though, you know. So yeah. Not many I'm people here. melt McEnroe. <laughs>
<laughs> but you always had John. I, I saw you when you were with him when we were together. You yeah. have him in the palm of your hand. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, you I did. have to keep on my toes when I'm working with Mac, you know, but I love that challenge of, of working with him because, you know, as you know, he's very, very outspoken. Um, but I, I, I really love working with him and the tribute that he gave me at the very end of Wimbledon, that means so much to me as well. You no, know, it's very I, special. I didn't realise it. Yeah. And question of sports as well. I mean, a lot mm. of great, great shows, great, oh. great moments for you. I mean, you, I don't think you can ever retire because you'll always be Sue Barker and we'll always love you. But, you know, those shows coming to an end was a big deal oh. for you because tougher than yourself and Doss. Oh, you're pretty God. tight. We are you? so we are so close. We have our own little WhatsApp group. We're always in touch. We go out for lunches and dinners and that. We've got a tour at the end of the so year, I hear. which we're going to go around the theatres. So I'm going to have to keep them in check again, you know, which I will thoroughly uh, enjoy. But those were just the best times, you know, question of sport. I watched as a kid and couldn't believe I was presenting it and got it to do it for 24 years. So. But again, again, that thing of being a, a woman and kind of fronting that, a sports yeah. show and being and a panel show and being the one, I mean, that uh, it's incredible when you think back at that time that you did that. Did you realise sort of how important that was? I didn't, actually, and I mm. tell you, because a guy we know very well, David Coleman, he was a mentor to me and mm. he was the one pushing me and saying, you can do it, yeah, you know, and just having that one person, a, a legend of sports broadcasting yeah. like David, just sort of encouraging you to do that was all I needed. And then once I got on board and my first captains were Ali McCoyst and John Parrott, they, it was just such a delight and, and the show was such fun and, you know. It was the way you bossed it with kindness <laughs> as well. You have all these sports <laughs> people in there and you're like, Push, oh. oh, yeah, no, I, I had to keep him in check now and again. I mean, yeah. Matt Dawson still calls me boss. That's my, <laughs> that's my nickname. So, yeah. oh, listen, it's so lovely oh, to see you and congratulations you. on the book. Uh, it's out in paperback, Calling the Shots, and uh, tomorrow that is, but I'm sure you can pre order it right now. <laughs> For the pictures alone, the photographs are fantastic yeah. as lovely. well. That's great. <laughs> Suits. Yeah, my mum gave me the worst haircut when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> so good you. to see you. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Thanks so much. Uh